Pedro, he got you some yoga pants? <laughs> yeah, show, show, he got me show, show us them booty! Show him that booty! Uh, I'm not wearing them right now because I what forgot. What the hell? <laughs> what the- Go! If you go, go now! Change the, your uh, pants! Change your- <laughs> Take them off on stream and put on the <laughs> yoga pants. Right now. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show to cover the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. We are back. It's another Saturday. It's a different month. We've made it to June. The world has not completely imploded just yet. Yeah. Give it another week. That's right, 2020. <laughs> it's just the warm up. Did you? Did anyone see like the little comic and it was the meteor and the aliens hovering around Earth? And he's like, no, you first. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> not far from the truth. What's up, everybody? Hopefully uh, everything's going smooth. Uh, maybe you're going back to work or maybe you get to stay home, depending on however that works out for you. I know George... Jordan, you're just like, ah, I need to get out. And Pedro's like, I'm good. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good, but I still have to get out because mm. someone needs to send out laptops to half the country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, what's everyone been up to? I know I've been kind of busy uh, making a video with the Stream Deck because apparently this was a larger issue than I thought about because it'll lose Windows window focus if you touch anything. And it's like, there's got to be a way around this, which I've got an extremely hacky way around it it's not the right way around it. it's basically here's the tools watch watch the video look at the guide it's doable but we need somebody who really knows some python stuff to like stick these bits together in a more workable situation that video um will probably be out monday or tuesday for patrons we'll go for everybody by the end of the week but i do want to point out um we are well i'm redoing all of the internal wiring for the digital mixer which is the thing and I'm running on door six because I think I got a thing figured out that's going to solve another thing. And there's some other stuff, but I don't even know when the... Oh, I did send the Black Magic card away. To, to whom? To, to Black Magic. Oh, oh? Yeah. They're taking, they're taking it back? Well, they gave me an RMA thing. All right. So that is, it has arrived. That's the update from last week. Mm. You know, I'm like, okay, they have it. And I'm kind of feeling like they're going to be like, ah, there's nothing wrong with it. And like, you lie. I have the video here. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> What's new with you, Jordan? Uh, sunlight in the big city. I mean, there's no more sunlight. The sun's gone down. I've Quick. drinking my own piss. Yeah. You know, for the uh, summer. No. The, wait, uh, here's a real thing. Yeah. Is was uh, does the sun go out that quick in Toronto or is, was that going behind a building? It may have, in fact, gone past the building. Okay. I can That'll kind do of see there's a little bit of daylight. I'm all, yeah, I'm in clustered around buildings. It was no, like I'm a still, five I'm, minute period. I looked there and I was like, whoa, all right. <clears throat> I've, I've, I've been waiting for my fucking chair to arrive from Amazon. <laughs> they, I, I, I gotta think, I gotta think Aldius, though. He sent me those power cables I need. So now I'm actually standing in front of this desk now. I have it in like full standing mode. So we're going to see how long my knees can last throughout an entire podcast. Um... <laughs> It'll, what are your no. thoughts on a pogo stick? <laughs> uh, it makes me want to go jump, pogo, 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 bounce, pogo, 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 pogo. Is there possibly a slam in there anywhere? No, I, I, you'd, you'd have to check with Search Tankian, but ah, I don't think no, I, I was just looking forward to going back to the days where Jordan was sitting on a ball and bouncing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's coming back. There's too much crap on my floor. It's gonna pop, and I'm gonna bust my coccyx. It hurts, man. <laughs> it hurts. I had to give up the ball after the third time. That that sudden, abrupt deceleration at the end of the ride sucks. Yeah. It's rubbish. And, and then you just kind of lie on the floor, because, like, you just, just reconsidering your life. That was the third time. It was, like, actively getting older, you know, being, like, um... Like, Late twenties, early third, first time, second time, mid twenty, getting you know into the deep thirties. That third time, it's like, no, we can't handle another one of those. <laughs> that would be pretty. <laughs> but what kind of cheer did you end up getting, man? It was it was like some lime green thing. I can I can track down the thing in it, Amazon. Uh, but like they're like, hey, we can, we can get it by like June third. It's arriving June fifteenth. Hey, it's been held up at the border. Eat shit. Uh huh. So that that that's my life. What about you, Pedro? Anything new? Uh, no, I too have been checking uh, tracking numbers to see when I'm getting my Pinebook Pro. 
oh, because yeah. I want to play around with it. Yeah. But that sweet little so, package of vid. Yeah, it, it, it will be uh, interesting, okay. I hope. Uh, I also got the NVMe adapter so you can actually have a proper uh, NVMe SSD in it instead of just the um, really slow EMMC module that it comes with. <laughs> so, yeah. Is that <laughs> roughly the equivalent of putting like a jet engine on a tractor? Jet tractor. Not as cool. Definitely not as cool. No. <laughs> Jet, Jet Tractor is the name of the cop in my new movie that I'm writing. It basically completely moves the uh, like the bottleneck from the EMMC to See, kids, the SOC. This is the point where you're like, why is the name of the episode Jet Tractor? I'm like, ah, oh, there it is. Right at the beginning. <laughs> There's a jet over at the Tractor Stein place. I look forward to your videos about you exploring and making, manipulating, and doing the Pine Book Boogie. I, uh, yeah, no, that's kind of the plan. There will be, like, a proper review that Jordan will be forced to read through and correct my English, mm -hmm. which is also what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Jordan, is there anything else you're looking for? Looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, forward. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm also looking forward to shoving a bunch of nails up my penis because yeah. that's pr <laughs> that, 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 will, that will help dull the pain of reading Smooth Pedro's essay segue. writing. Yes. Horse Steam. Let us. Hey, hey, that limiter limit work. work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, the, the we're, on, we're on a long, lonely, dusty road, and we all have stuff on our faces, so it's really, really hard to navigate in the dark. Um, yeah, so Road to VR has a little piece out. Um, so apparently one uh, month after Half-Life Alex was released, um, people are still using their VR headsets. Now It looks like they're not just playing Alex and then chucking them over to eBay to see if they can recoup some of their losses. Because I mean, and I mean, like, yeah, when, once you're done with the one high profile VR game, you got to start playing other stuff to justify the $500 plus you just spent on a headset. And I mean, so honestly, there are a bunch of fun VR games out there like um, Beat Saber, uh, Super Hot, Gorn, uh, Tetris FX, which is currently an Epic Score store exclusive, but like, whatever, you can play it on Lutris. Um, to name a few, there, there's, there's a lot, um, and hopefully people are now checking them out and giving them a little more publicity, because, like, the devel developers work hard on those games. It's mm -hmm. a shame that they don't get a lot of presentation, because the uh, that requires the headset. Yeah. I don't know, I kind of feel like this is, looking at the little chart, it's like, ah, both of you had VR headsets. Oh, look, you bought one for your friend. Awesome, oh, want to get one for Christmas. Then it did jump, but we're talking about a jump from, like, nothing to, like... Two percent of which just paid, like, I mean yeah. that's still a lot of people though, right? I mean I mean that that's that's more than the number of Linux users on Steam. <laughs> if we are to take the Steam survey for whatever I got two of them this because week. everyone else does. So what were you I got doing? <laughs> I, 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 I booted up my laptop and I started Steam and I'm okay. like, oh, there's a Steam survey, and then I went home and it seems like hey, there's an update, and then I got another Steam survey. I was just making sure it was you, man. Right. <laughs> well, well uh, I can tell you that if you're if you're running Steam on, say, a Steam box, and you immediately start into ten foot big picture mode, you don't get any surveys. So there's that. <laughs> I'm still genuinely blown away that because the the commitment, especially for like the Vive. I mean, with the headset, then you got to have the lighthouses, then you got to have the room to do it. So. It, yeah, it's uh, eight hundred dollars for the Vive and a thousand yeah. for the um, the yeah, index. But no, thing, I read man. the article. It's like, oh, okay, so the the it seems to have capped off. So whoever was going to buy a VR headset's kind of there. And um, I had a look at the comments. It's like, oh, now we're discussing the meaning of niche, are we? All right, uh -huh. okay. It's like one comment in. It's like, oh, it's a niche. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. It's like, Oh, all right. <laughs> well, something that definitely helped out our niche asses is Proton. And oh, yeah. we've been following this all week. It was like RC1, RC2. No, it's just the final version. A couple things in this uh, for me that I really noticed. Pedro, you didn't notice the same thing, but this uh, really smoothed out Weeb Souls. But a couple of things. This dramatically improved loading times for Streets for H4. They're still working on that. Performance improvements for Doom Eternal, Detroit Become Human, and we happy few. Uh, now, 
the during the RC stuff, uh, they'd taken out some of the wine mono upgrades that were causing regressions and dark, but I never heard of dark. So yeah, spooky. No, uh, the one thing I noticed about KDE is like, oh, on KDE games being full screen should no longer prevent alt tabbing out of the game. I had one game that that was the issue uh, with. Uh, if I had it in full screen, it wouldn't let go of the cursor, but that was the one game. And it did fix it, so I guess kudos. <laughs> but yeah, also, so, uh, the the I didn't notice much of anything else. Ven uh, mentioned the weeb souls being uh, a bit smoother. Looks about the same on my end. But let me go ahead and put it like this: it, it was a, w a bit smoother on my little twenty sixty compared to your ten eighty. Big, Damn. big 1080. So big, so thick. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, 1080. Yeah, like, go ahead. Tw 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 20, 2060, so small. So, so weak. Um, no, I mean, so, it, I mean, it, it's the, the development of this has gone gone on over the week, right? We had a bunch of our seasons. It's nice to see that Valve is now, like, actually trying to put uh, upcoming proton releases in front of people so they can actually start hammering out issues. Um, one, one of the things that piqued my interest is if you got a 5.7 kernel, which just got released this week. Um, you might get some rumblies for your racing wheel. No, you won't. No? No, well, hang on. If you're on AMD, you might. Because NVIDIA, on AMD. NVIDIA will walk up to you and slap that nonsense right out of there and be like, nah, son, we just got no. the 5.6. What are you bringing this 5.7 nonsense up in our house for? <laughs> well, the, I, I was going to say, like, talk, talk about niche. We're talking about, like, Linux users who have racing wheels, man. Yeah. It's, uh, th I think that's about on par with the Linux users who have VR headsets. Probably, so, probably. Linux users who play video games who have a steering wheel, so it's in it's nicheception. Both of them. Yeah, in, in VR. In VR. In VR. <laughs> Speaking of VR, man, uh, Booga Booga updated in Alex. Indeed. Uh, so this, this is a neat little workshop mod for Alex. PT, what is it? You've never heard of it. So there was a brief flash of hope many, many <laughs> years ago when we, we, we had news that Kideo Kojima and Norman Reedus were working together with Kami on a Silent Hill game, and they put out a little demo, and everyone was like, wow, this game is spooky as shit. Um, it would be great in VR. It never came out in VR, and Konami decided it's they're better off spending their time making uh, pachinko machines. Uh, so the demo was the only thing that came out of it. It was very, very popular. Someone has remade it in Alex uh, using the SDK in VR, which I think is really cool because you could... I, I think I think horror games are a really really effective VR target because you're isolating people. You have full control over what they're perceiving. I, I know when I play Amnesia, I'm certainly having something else playing in the background, so that when the spooky stuff happens, I can be like, ah, I wasn't actively paying attention to it. Um, but uh, this is a workshop mod. I, no idea if this works under Linux because none of us have a uh, VR headset, so we don't know if there's any case sensitive shenanigans involved. Yeah. But still, uh, it's a cool little uh, exercise. It shows what you can do with the engine, and yeah. If 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 you're gonna if you're gonna start making VR experiences, PT is probably a really good place to start. I guess I guess I'm gonna be that guy. The um, nice cursor left on your screen there, Brian. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. 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 That's cool. Craps. Uh, I don't think we're gonna run into that issue. I remember the internet did kind of lose its mind when that initially came out, and they're like, "Oh, this is yeah." Be a big and then thing. Uh, right. Konami pulled it from the PS4, and there were people selling PS4s with it installed, yeah, right, for yeah. a massive markup on eBay. <laughs> and there were collectors probably paying that much for it. Yep. Them. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yep. 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 So this isn't good news. This isn't bad news. This is just strange news. This is yeah. This it's is just news. Just pretty freaking weird. Uh, Electronic Arts uh, play the best of EA starting now, and yeah, Electronic Arts are basically back on Steam as we talked about a while back when they first released uh, Jedi, whatever, the new Fallen one. Order. Yes. Um, the. They said that they were going to be bringing their uh, games library that was previously only available in Origin to Steam. So here it is. Uh, you have the Command and Conquer Remastered Collection, and then of course Dragon Age Inquisition, Plants vs Zombies 2, Dragon Age 2, <laughs> and a bunch of the Need for Speed games, which were the ones that I was actively looking at because it's like, oh, oh, those are on Steam now, are they? Oh Let's shit, you can play Crisis on DB, uh, and oh, uh, no reports yet. All right, I'll keep an eye on that then, but. As it turns out, I hadn't 
bought an EA game since Dragon Age Origins in 20, uh, 2009. So that's an 11 year. I didn't see anything year. that looked like too crazy, man. Uh, <laughs> now, I've, I've always been a little bit curious about like Mirror's Edge, and it's currently like a buck ninety nine, but I don't even know if I'm a dollar ninety nine curious about it. Jordan, did you see anything in here that looked amazeballs to you? I mean, not. I mean, uh, I can finally buy Dragon Age Two. I only have Origins on Steam. Um, I, I don't. I don't know. Like, um, Mirror's Edge was okay. Um, for what for what it was, uh, we're probably gonna see some more stuff. Oh, there's there's some Bioware games that. Uh, yeah. Let's not talk about that. There is one game here that you can play on Linux, though. Not that EA had anything to do with it, aside from like, "Hey, here's the source code. Have fun." Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Uh, <laughs> my big question is, um, how can I? It's, I guess what I'm trying to say is, it's going to be a good idea to pay attention to Proton because I know people are going to be picking and hammering on these because some of these should just straight up launch some of them are still going to require origin in some shape form or fashion then again oh. there's probably some rng that no you still have to use origin with steep which adds another layer of nope on top yeah of a, a lot of these are just older games so probably they're going to work fine under proton mm. minus any sort of like ea fuckery true i'm just waiting for those need for speed games to show up on proton dv it's like mm. <laughs> So Need for Speed, Tokyo Drift. You think this looks <laughs> fascinating? I think it looks interesting. Um, so this is uh, Drox Operative 2. Um, sequel is that Drox anything Operative. like Drax? <laughs> no. Fine. Very stealthy. Intense it's, combat. It's combat intensifies. Eats potato chips. Um, yeah, no. So uh, essentially, uh, you're 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 playing as like a free agent in the middle of like a four X strategy game, uh, like a Stellaris or a Civilization or a Master of Orion or something. Um, it's an action RPG, sort of in the vein of Diablo. Um, or it's it's basically Space Torchlight or Sportslight, as I like to call it. Um, <laughs> it's in early access. You can pick it up for about thirteen the bucks. Sportslight genre was born. Sports. Um, but uh, the one nice thing here is that it has online co op. It has online multiplayer. Oh my mm -hmm. god, you can actually play this Cross with people. So platform. Ooh. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I'm going to take a look at this after we're done with Sam 2 on Thursdays. Um, yeah, it, wow. yeah, that could wow. pretty wow. be very, yeah. very fun. When's but it's still in early saw, access. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. so no, I mean, no, no XP chairs. in a system requirement. Um, Tuesday. Uh, the, you're on Windows. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you, you, you don't need a <laughs> Linux. You just you just need a processor to run it on Linux. He's got to make sure it's Linuxing correctly. Uh, what do we yes. have next? Oh, man. Up next, there's Electro Ride Prologue. And Somebody found a shader, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They found that neon shader that just about every Unity racing game seems to go through that particular phase, and yep. this one is no exception. Uh, and uh, I saw uh, Jordan's comments in the show notes, just like, oh, so it's uh, distance, but neon. It's like... Distance, this is not. And, no, um, it, it, it's more It's more Soviet cars than distance. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's not distance. The physics are all wrong. Uh, the cars handle like... Um, to say that, it's like, imagine a bar of soap uh, sliding on a rink of ice and trying to follow a track with any kind of precision is just not going to happen. But... Yeah, uh, the the odd thing here was the other thing that Jordan put in the notes. So go ahead, Jordan. Yeah. So you scroll down. I'm like, okay, this looks okay. What's 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 the system requirements to go Steam OS Linux? You're like 64 bit plus Proton. What? what? So uh, are are you allowed to do this? I wasn't aware that you were allowed to have that icon if you did not have a Linux depot at least registered. After uh, yeah, like rolling through cool. and reading some of the, <laughs> the, this kind of comes across as like a 16, 15, 16 year old. Um, so I think it's more like, oh, that's not a thing. I don't know I'm supposed to do that. Anyway, it's free. Go try it for yourself with Proton. But then again, you got to keep in mind, this is a free game with mixed reviews. That says a lot. 
Mm. Yeah, and you shouldn't get to use that icon if you don't no, have a native Linux version, especially if it's no. a Unity game. Just click export. Claim you have a hey, Linux so. version. Uh, spoilers. No spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. Stop spoiling <laughs> yeah. Star Wars for us, Pedro. I want to know what happens to Dumbledore. Hey, man. Uh, totes, not Hyperlight Drifter. Just got a demo on. Yes. Uh, so, resolution or resolution. However, you want to pronounce that. Uh, it has two lions. Uh, it has two eyes in it, and there is a free demo available, which is really, really nice. And I played through the demo, and I have to say, I very much liked what I played. I very much liked what they're doing. Uh, hopefully, it won't start crashing like crazy, like uh, Hyperlight Drifter did. But <laughs> so, 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 would you say it kind of scratches that itch? It, it manages. If if you really liked Hyperlight Drifter, is this just like more of that? Uh, it's slightly different, but yeah, no, it's very much in the same vein, yeah. <laughs> hmm. I don't know, I installed it, I played around with it for a minute, then, uh, Pedro, you will, um, be able to speak to this. Let's see, what are the requirements? Not much, uh, 64-bit Ubuntu, 64, that's fine, gigabyte of space. All right. When you first get outside, um, you're like, ah, oh, that monster Can't kind of, it. well... <laughs> To structure it correctly, your first thought is like, that looks like a giant kitty. I wonder what that is. Then it turns like, that's ah, just a big ass sand kitty. Okay, never mind. It is legitimately a. All right. It's a giant ass kitty, which, if you find the teeny tiny little white kitty uh, in the map immediately to the left of that, yeah. you can sort of lure the white kitty to it, and it will stop the giant kitty from following you for like five seconds, which lets you get all the way. To the end without it catching you. Oh, okay. I might have <laughs> meow, meow, meow. Uh, removed the other kitty from the equation. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I heard the other kitty meowing. It's like, oh, you're down there. How do I get down there? All right. <laughs> All right. So we're looking forward to this. I mean, everything worked out of the box. I liked it. Right? I liked it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I was saying when we when we first talked about it. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of ripping off the HLD aesthetic, right? But yeah. if it does a good job, if it's like a good hyperlight drifter game, then more power to it, right? Yeah. Uh, well, up up next. Let's I have, begin. I, I have to pull out my pumpkin tracks box set because I wanted to do crash this. test dummies. Savage <laughs> Halloween. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, so 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 many Halloween references I could make. It's going to be a dark ride by the time before we get to the end of it. Uh, but yeah, um, so um, there, there. I will say though, I'm disappointed that this game does not have any Macho Man. It's a 2D side-scrolling sort of shoot 'em up in the vein of like Contra. old Nintendo game Contra, like Batman for the NES, that sort mm -hmm. of thing, um, where you play as like spooky dudes and you're 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 either a werewolf or you're a pumpkin head or you're like a sexy witch with a gun. That was a straight up uh, TMT. Okay, hang on. Let's we we gotta break <laughs> this down. We gotta back this up. All right, that's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the NES. Yeah, that, that, that that's is. Battle Toads. <laughs> it is. Let's just be honest. Sure. You can see the yeah. inspirations, yes. And that, that that's some that's some straight up Mario Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> and Metroid. Yeah. So it it's it's basically NES games, the game with spooky scary <laughs> scary skeletons. Possibly Mega Man. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, yeah, that's Metroid right again. That's yep. Gondra. Yeah, so so I mean, real, real, really, it's if you're missing that genre of game, here here it is. It, we got we got no price. It's coming spoon. Uh, Steam OS and Linux requirements. Uh, yeah, no, I was it, reading it, the description and the cards. The monsters are trapped in the earth, uh -huh. so problem solved, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the file the files are in the computer they're, they're in the computer the, monster, the delicious delicious i mean the monsters are invading monster. okay but they're trapped in the earth it's like oh so we're good no because they can they can <laughs> they can dig up they could just you know don't go digging holes because they're trapped in the earth <laughs> you're, you're asking a bunch of humans to not dig holes dude. Right. when they're done chasing yeah. waterfalls they're gonna start digging holes no. All right, TLC. All right, fine. <laughs> All right, hole in the sky, take me to heaven. Coming up next, feel really, really bad if you just bought an NVIDIA card because there's some newer ones coming down the pipe and they're ugly, much to Pedro's chagrin. Also, also, um, uh, there's there's an engine that originally got leaked and now it's getting re-implemented. That's kind of neat. It's yeah. This.
There will be news. That much I can promise you. Put them in your mouth. That, that doesn't work. <laughs> let's all go sit in pews. Salted. And eat cashews. Uh, uh, in any case, uh, this is the part of the show where we take a bit of a break to thank you. No, we don't. We beg we... for money. That's true. Well, well yes. I mean, we, 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 we can do two <laughs> things at after. once poorly. Have you not read the timestamps? <laughs> this section is clearly called shameless self-promotion. Indeed. Look how shameless we are. Do you, do you want us to get some shame? Maybe you should buy some for us by heading on over to linuxgamecast.com and putting your mouse over the support button. Hey, I made a new thing, links. by the way. With your support, you did. we were able to do a thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll tell you, everyone you, about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can be quiet a lot longer than you, sweetheart. Are you, are you going to tell me things? <laughs> uh, whatever. Head on over to Patreon. Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast, where you can see that thing that Ven's going to describe in one to several minutes from now. Um, becoming a Patreon is great because you get a lot of stuff for um, your donation. It's We, we do uh, per show billing. That may change as, they, as Patreon changes their fee structure. But anyways, you can get access to the show notes. You get access to our Discord channel. You get access to an extra hour of LGC content via the pre-pre-super shows in where we talked about video cards. Ugly, ugly video cards. We're talking about video cards. I, we do want to point out that that's available as a custom RSS feed that you get. So you don't have to mess around. You just boop the, that in, you download it, or you can come and watch it live, man. Yeah, there was, there was video this week. Executive there was streamed producers. video. I, I'm working on making that like a regular thing. We've been trying it for the mm -hmm. past two weeks. So if you're an executive producer, Ooh. you can pop in and get a live video feed as well. of Access. Uh, like a, no. Access. <laughs> access to the show notes is cool because you can suggest stories, you can fact check us, you can just tell us what you think as, and we'll talk about it because it's... You can do what Dax did that we this week. Dax's like, yo, this thing's not... Wait a minute, does it, it's not Linux. Oh, wait, it doesn't work with wine. Never mind. Yeah, never mind. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we, we also got uh, wish lists. Uh, I have a wish list. Pedro has a wish list. The studio has a wish list. If you buy us stuff from the wish list, you get on that reflective surface behind Ven. This uh, wish list exists to prove Pedro wrong. So I was like, yeah, I, I want to upgrade the 2060. Well, actually, I want to play co slot with a 2060 super blower. And Pedro said, they still, it's like, they don't make blower 2060s. And I was like, and he was wrong. You were correct, but they do make 2060 supers. It's got a little yeah, cake. Speaking yeah, of this no, wall, hang on. Oh, Asus. man. We got a new person. Boom, but you know me, love him. Man, you still can't make it on. I got to move. Hang on. Let me, let me move. <laughs> kind of okay and the other screw one you, and screw you are there Aldius <laughs> Aldius is on the fine upstanding catable walls 2.0 because at the very bottom of this rack behind me which caused me to do some improbable yoga that I'm still like jeez my right leg still messed up from that um, nothing that won't work itself out a 1U uh, APC which is going to give us a solid everything for our audio stack including Jackbox is a solid 7 minutes on that so seriously, I know it's like boring stuff like that, but that's very important. Hopefully we never have to use it. But if the power blinks, that's an extra seven minutes. That's not on the other four UPSs. So thank you, Sarah. Yeah. You uh, he also sent me on. some uh, long, long cords. So now I can engage standing desk mode as you see me sort of muddling back and forth as I'm shifting weight from one leg to another. <laughs> um, and Pedro, he got you some yoga pants. <laughs> yeah, show, show, he got me show, show us them booty. Show him that booty. Uh, I'm not wearing them right now because I what forgot. What the hell? What the? <laughs> go. If you go, go now. Change the, your uh, pants. Change your. <laughs> take them off on stream and put on the yoga pants right now. Too hot for Right Twitch. now, sir. Uh, but if you check the uh, Wednesday show, uh, what uh, myself and, and uh, Jill are on. Uh, yeah. I, I showed them off there, and yeah, no, they're right up against my keister, and they are very, very comfy. It's just that I had to get dressed today to do things, so I forgot to put them back on. Look, Pedro, it is 2020. You can freely walk around in yoga pants if you so choose. I, th I think, I they think the real pockets. I think the real problem is that Pedro doesn't have an ass, and he's ashamed of it. Listen, if they don't have pockets... Oh, no, we, I have an ass. I, 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 I can get you a bag. Pockets. Pa Pedro, I can get you a bag to carry your stuff. <laughs> I need pockets. It's a like satchel. Pockets. Indiana Jones has yes. one. <laughs> all right. All right. Man, uh, that's but awesome. I, uh, I guess this concludes our shilling hour. That does it. Pretty that's much. brilliant. Um, thank, thank you, each and every one of you. Make this possible. Also, your name's going to be in the credits. We will uh, forever. Actually, we'll be so much in your debt. We'll be back next week to do the same thing again. 
So, so let, I guess I guess we got to talk about the new addition to our wish list now. The, the... Dude. Well, not 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 to Pedro's, anyways. Dude. All right. <laughs> what we're looking at. I'm still confused by that. <laughs> leaked images. Let, can you tell it's a slow news week, kids? Uh, yeah. Show NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080, which we were discussing in the pre pre super shows and. What you will notice is, uh, look at the ends on the one at the bottom, the shroud is on the left, and the one at the top, the shroud is on the right. What's up with Which that? Which means one of those fans is on one side of the card, and the other fan is on the other side of the card. So one is on the back plate, the other one is in the front plate. It's like, oh god, that tied a proper knot now, in my brain. Now, now prepare your minds for this, gentlemen. <laughs> What if what if those fans are on the both plates? What what if it's like, about dual biradial? Like they're doing that and they're sucking air in both ways. Uh, you cool? know, Lower it, it's one one is on one end of the card and what the other one's on the other. Yeah. Besides being on opposite sides of the card as well. So so the what, the other, what, the, what the I'm other saying, thing is... Pedro, is what, what if there if you flip that one over, there's another fan. What if you flip that one over and there's an entire universe behind it? <laughs> there's a fan on the front <laughs> and the back. There's a PCB in the middle. That's the confusing bit here. It's a magic well, so, fan. <laughs> well, so the, the the thing the thing is we don't know we don't know what the fuck that blue one is. That might be Intel's new GPU for all we know. Yeah. Only the one in the front no, is labeled it says GeForce RTX uh, on the blue one. In Intel on Intel GeForce <laughs> RTX. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm no, just, my first, I'm, I'm, my first thing is saying. like, that looks fake. <laughs> now, it, it, it could also be engineering samples, we don't know. This could just be a clever Photoshop. It could be someone just took, uh, made like a really stupid looking cooler and wrote RTX 3080 <laughs> on it. Yeah. And took a picture of it and sent it to a journalist. Yeah. We, don't, we, we don't know. That's, that's, that's the point, is that it's just complete speculation. We're going to start speculating now, because it's a picture. Uh, I look forward to hopefully cheaper 20 series <laughs> devices. I, I, I look Again, forward to a future where AMD every does something about it. <laughs> I look forward to a future where everything is ray traced, including the kernel. Listen, Pedro, uh, we're not all NVIDIA shells like you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> look, if Big Navi puts the, uh, the 1080 to shame, I might buy one. <laughs> Here's hoping that AMD, because they've done <laughs> such good work with Zen, that the Radiant Technology Group is going to be able to walk out and dominate a two-year-old card. <laughs> Hopefully. <Yeah. laughs> Hopefully. It's like the 5700 wasn't a terrible video card. It sort of went to bat with the 2070. The 5700 and XT were good mid-range yeah. cards, but let's yeah. be honest with ourselves. They were mid-range cards, and you know they were reasonably priced. They sold well, I think. Yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, they released the, uh, the sales numbers, and apparently they sold about half a billion of them in 2019 alone. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the thing we thought we'd point it out. So we have more speculation and more vapor hardware. Yeah. Vaporwave? And, um, a vaporwave? What would be in a vaporwave? Would you have to set the time on it? Uh, I don't know. I'm just expecting a lot of ravers. Pipe cleaners in there. Sorry, vaporwave. So, so, uh, <laughs> so, so when do I get to play E.T. on my giant TV? Tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe uh, early or uh, mid June, as they say, if you were one of the first 500 people to pre order one, because that is when they're rolling it out of the factory. But yeah, despite, uh, you know, most of the games that we used to, you know, make fun of because they would be forever in early access, they never will be. And we also had similar thing for hardware, namely the Smock Z and Shut up, the Pedro. Atari VCS. 3D render. Wait, that's not. Well, that's also not no, showing that, me. That, that's a video. That, that's just a video. <laughs> that, that, that's, not, that's asteroids, man. You like. be, if you show it off your console, you might want to make sure it's in front. Um, because I could hook up just about anything to that. But there was a controller. They're using the controller, so there, there's that at least. Hmm. But yeah, no, they also have a video that shows it playing uh, Borderlands 2. There we go. And I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, oh, okay, that makes that much more interesting than mm. um you know any of the atari games proper 
But yeah, no, uh, they will be rolling off the line in mid-June, so if you were one of the first 500 people to kiss goodbye to however much money you paid, you might get one soon. Um, I am, I'm, I don't know, man, I'm going to have to like zoom and enhance on that when I get a chance. The basketball looks interesting. Possibly. It only requires one button, yeah. apparently. But, I mean, this is the only video that I'm seeing where we're seeing the console itself. Wait, hang on. There's another one. <laughs> well, maybe. No, it was just the... <laughs> it was just the thumbnail. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Come on. Wait. Uh, did, did, well, did at, least you, at least you can watch The Mandalorian on your Atari now. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Hundred <laughs> percent. I got to be real about that, man. Um, here's where I am with this, man. Simply because the VCS uh, and Atari's like we're going to do motels too. I'm watching the video. I am definitely watching the video. I am. I'm still not believing it. I'm just not. Uh, I'm just having these Smash Z flashbacks. And you know, you brought up, but you're still not out yet. I know. <laughs> well, Pedro, I, I'm sure you'll be happy to know as I, I follow them on our smash. Z, said, uh, immediately jumped on COVID. They're like, Oh, hey, look, uh, that now we're delayed because of this, too. By the way, just, there is a delay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, there was one prototype that was sent around to a few very select YouTube channels, uh, but yeah, no, uh, <laughs> I want this to exist not because i want one but i hate it when you know we see hardware that's backed in kickstarter and especially from a project you know from the company that purchased the rights to the name Atari. infogrames yes <laughs> at least you would think there would be some safety in buying because i like stuff like this getting made and it really kneecaps the um credibility of anybody trying to do this They're like no man i lost this money on my Atari than on everything, you know, so I'm not going to back it. Yeah. video games. The next yeah. project. So yeah, I want this to actually come out, even though I care nothing about, I mean, it's good around Linux. That's what we're talking about. Jordan, what are your thoughts? I mean, it's, uh, at least they're trying to do, trying to make something out of it beyond like, oh, it's a, it's a SNES mini or oh, it's a PlayStation mini or whatever. Um, if, if, if they can, if they can like make a decent, like Linux powered set top box that can play games at a decent rate, or like maybe there's some I don't I don't know how that I don't know how that fucker is gonna be playing Borderlands 2 on anything but low. That that's that's really that's really it for me. Let's be honest, Borderlands 2 doesn't take much. It doesn't, no, it doesn't. But and if you're playing on an I was playing AMD that on my APU, 770, like yeah. that one supposedly is, uh it, you can actually play it on medium at 60 Ooh, FPS. Medium. I know. I've tried. <laughs> well, on, 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 on that, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, because the small form factor too, they have they have to do a lot more aggressive like thermal throttling as well, so. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, again, I, I, don't, I don't know. It might be cool that the controller straight up looks like a spray painted Xbox 360 controller, so that could be literally anything. But it's got red uh, buttons. It's smaller Shut though. up, you later. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, at, at, at this point, like, Put it out there. Let's see, let's see what ha happens. Thank you, Salty, for subscribing me to this channel that I have. <laughs> I have access to edit and like upload videos too. Thank hey, you. you can finally uh, go back and watch all of our wonderful archives. Yeah, yes. hey. you can watch the vods now. Yeah, with, without having to go through the management console. <laughs> That's the thing, man. Uh, yeah, uh, should have got off the bottom with that with VCS. I mean, the next bit of yeah. news I want to hear from that is. Backers are getting their units. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and actually have people like, yeah, it's a thing and it works and it's awesome. It would it would be you know like the cherry on top of them going, look, we made a steam machine that's better than the steam machines that Valve released. Oh wait. <laughs> Tell me about this wine announcement. <laughs> and yes. Yeah. There's a teeny tiny little maintenance release for Wine 5.0. It's 5.0.1. And what it does is it fixes compilation with GCC 10. Do you hear that, NVIDIA? Zones. Do you hear that, NVIDIA? Are you listening? It's possible. <laughs> Could you update CUDA to compile? I'm sorry. What were you saying? One of these days. Okay. Uh, and they fixed 
well, they, they, they have various bug fixes. Um, there's some home designer suites, some quick time, because apparently that's a thing that people want to run in wine. <laughs> uh, Spin Tires Mudrunner uh, apparently was crashing at launch, which is not an issue with Proton 5. Again, I know, I tried it. Uh, but it was an issue with wine proper, so they fixed that. And yeah, it, it's just a roll up with a number of bug fixes and quality of life improvements to the oh, supposedly stable um, 5.0 bridge. Now, I, I, I was hoping you were going to jump in and read his part. Oh, I mean, I don't... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't know. He already he already stole my maintenance release in the GCC yeah. ten thing. Like, I mean, it's I, the first line of the thing. He can't help himself. He's like, listen, it's not nailed down, man. Look, it's it's play, it's plagiarismo doing Plagiarism. his plagiarism best. That's what he does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, like, the yeah. first freaking line. It's not your color. <laughs> it's, yeah, man. Color no, colors and show notes are important. Actual announcement. <laughs> That's not really, yeah. Okay. I, 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 fine, line. fine. They add, they added some time zones to this build too. Ooh. Ah. No, uh, but I mean, I mean, like, yeah. So it's, it's a like, like was mentioned before. It's a maintenance release. The qu quick time bugs. I don't know. Fix, fixing quick time bugs will probably upstream some other thing because things rely on other things. One of the good things line, about this, I mean, stuff yeah. like eh, you know, there's at least one or two people like yes. Like torchlight loading times. <laughs> Why would I? Didn't even know people still played that. Somebody's very happy. Yeah, well, I mean, under Linux, you don't have heads, so you got to play it under Wine. No, that's been fixed. Oh. <laughs> Flivit went back and fixed that. <laughs> All right. Well, well, well then, uh, then you can handle your exceptions in Gothic 2, Night of the Raven. Hey, man, <laughs> uh, a game we talked about a minute ago, in fact, we threw the uh, Sacred Chairs at him. And it called Superland. Not Superland, Supraland. It was Unreal Engine 4 game. Standard joint. We always like to take those out because they're more of a curiosity because Unreal Engine 4 support under Linux is not that stellar. Now, you can get a decent Linux build if, big if, you know what you're doing. If you're a competent developer, we've seen it. It can be done. However, tapping that export button, fam, unlike Unity, to Unity, there, there's probably like a 70, 75% chance you're going to get a decent build out of that. Can't say that with Unreal Engine 4 and it comes to find out the developer, David. Well, you know, I've been chasing this little tiny bug around the studio for the better part of an hour. And I almost got him. Uh, <laughs> Welcome back to Breaking Bad. Dude, he's been <laughs> bugging me, man, as bugs do. There's been some issues with the latest update. And David M. writes, he's like, yo. Well, some dude earlier, he was like, hey, it's not working. Here's the stack trace and all that. And he's like, thanks. But I have no idea what to do with that. Okay. Jordan, uh, could you explain some of these moon glyphs that are appearing I mean, before my I, very eyes? I, I can't, but I assume if you run them through Valgrind, uh, something will happen. Pedro actually shows up in this thread later trying to give this guy programming advice. Oh. Um, but I, I mean, did not. <laughs> The, the, I'm, I'm on page two. There's unaccounted for us. So I got to rock in this. Yeah, the, no programming advice on that. <laughs> Okay, so one of the big issues there that we dealt in, um, this is the news that we write. Hey, I just click package for Linux and the engine does this thing. It's magic. That's all I got to do, man. That's all that's required. Then I put it in the Steam store and you give me money. And if you need support for it, well, I'll go fuck yourself. Uh, I can well, tell you to go fuck yourself, yeah. <laughs> but like, so, so a, a, that's a little concerning if the developer looks at a stack trace and says, I don't know what this is. That means that you're a you're probably not a developer. You're probably using like a very high level in, uh, implementation of the engine and just using a bunch of prepackaged assets. It's sad though because Super Superland's actually a good game. It's really fun. Yes, it's really creative. It it's really creative. There are good puzzles. <laughs> um, I I really enjoyed playing it. Performance issues aside, you would hope that the developer cares enough to support all the platforms that they're fucking selling it on. Um, I mean, yeah, also, we kind of knew it was an export job based on the performance hiccups that mm -hmm. we kind of guessed that was. You know what? Yeah. I, I was kind of like, you know, all right, so fine, clicked whatever. export, yeah. <laughs> then what happened a little later on in the thread, you know, somebody else is like, yo, well, you know, if you need to pull it from the um, Steam store, that's cool. Do what you got to do, fam. Uh, we'll just, you know, make, make with some refunds. It'll be great because, hey, you're taking it away. Then David comes back and he's like, yeah, I, I agree on maybe we should just pull it from the Steam store. But we, we, cannot financially justify supporting it properly not offering it would be better but you know we don't have control over refunding 
Wow. All right. All right. Um, he makes these dual arguments. Am I, am I right? Let him say this. Cause he's saying, you know, how can the Linux version be more work than gain? Cause he goes on to say this, uh, if, if you're doing a little more than tapping the export button, fam. So <laughs> where's the financial justification for the non-existent fucking support that you were not offering in the first place? I have questions about that because your words, they don't make any sense. Uh, Am I, am I am I missing something here, lads? No. At this point, he's literally making free money off off of the Linux version that he doesn't support. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm reading. <laughs> but I but I but I mean, like, I, go, going going back to what he was saying before, like, hey, well, the the Windows version works just as well under Linux, if not better. So I should just not support Linux. This is sort of like the double edged sword that is Proton, where we see developers saying, like, well, now we can throw we can throw out this excuse for not having to support our native games because now Valve will take care of it. I mean, for it's us. genuinely walking out there and going, listen, I've been selling this thing without any intent of being able to support it or the capability because I'm not going down to the Linux store and buying a Linux computer. I genuinely can't be arsed to put fucking Linux on a spare laptop to take a look at it. No, I tap the button. You give me the money. That's how it works. Fucko. I'm a developer. Yep. Um, here, you know, the dude was really quick. He was like, Whoa, Whoa, refunds. We don't have any control over that now. Let's just not bring money into this. Come on guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh Oh, we had a little blink. I know. Chris Tokyo. Maybe we're not going to go down. I don't know. It's definitely thinking about it. Uh, here's one of the things. <laughs> if you pull Linux <laughs> support, um, it, it, it shouldn't be an issue because there's only like, you know, six Linux users. You couldn't make a financial case even when you weren't doing anything. So, yeah. 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 Again, free money off of, you know, the Linux people that you weren't supporting in the past. And you literally just click the button as per your own admission. That's what I'm saying. But Rocket Cars did it. Rust did it. <laughs> I mean, the mechanism certainly exists inside of Steam. Mm hmm. And my comment on page two was literally the two relevant lines. One of them is it's looking for the debug symbols file, which if it's packaged as a release version, it shouldn't be looking for that at all. But that's not the important bit. The important bit is what comes afterwards. Low level fatal error. File unknown. There's a shader literally missing from uh, the engine. So and yeah, the yeah. engine, according Jesse. to the thing, it says, Jesse. please make sure cooking was successful. Jesse, we have to cook. <laughs> so, yeah, no, that tells you what the error is right there. If you can't read that, I'm sorry, but consider the curator recommendation Pedro, listen, revoked. Uh, we don't really have the financial, we don't have the budget to QA the reading. Reading, yeah, reading no, the forums is just we not can't afford budget. to yeah. read the seam forums except for you know the entire first page of the common thread <laughs> what's up with this man okay pedro has a habit of uh killing projects and i i apologize to the linux gaming community and the community as a whole for uh, asking me to do a video on the uh what was it called uh open joystick display may it rest in peace um because then did. immediately was shut down after that because pedro touched it single-handedly killing yet another project so i thought i thought um maybe we'd give this a mention pedro because <laughs> you know it's thing and it's browser based so you can just import it as a browser source hook it up and do your thing right yep i'm playing you with can, controller uh, right now <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 kind of turned on by this i don't know but yeah i tried it on my end and in firefox the uh dual shock 4 was completely off the buttons were mapped completely wrong but to be fair with open joystick display i have to have the dual shock 4 plugged in uh otherwise it won't uh it wouldn't register uh some of the buttons properly but when i open this website which is just gamepadviewer.com in chromium Everything worked fine in the DualShock 4, be it over Bluetooth or plugged in, analog sticks, triggers, buttons, everything was replying correctly to Working. my... Uh, hitting, yeah. Is that the word you were mining for? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it absolutely worked properly. <laughs> yeah, it took me a minute. 100% full disclaimer. Uh, it's like, this thing doesn't work. It doesn't work. I Read the screen. Touch the... Oh, okay. Now it shows up. 
Yeah. Yeah. And you can, there's a multitude of different ones too. They have PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4. You just click on the, uh, it defaults to the Xbox one. Rightly so, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, it has a bunch of different ones. I'm down with that. Um, being browser based, again, you can just pull it in as a browser source and key it up. Yep. Still yeah. didn't see anything from a Nintendo Power Pad. <laughs> what, what, what about that Switch Pro controller or the or the the Wii U controller screen? Thing? No, no, no. This only supports uh, uh, controllers for real gamers. Ah, <laughs> like the people who want to play Bayonetta too. Jordan looks forward to your email. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Speaking uh, speaking of emails and potential ceases and desists, so you might remember a few years ago when Luc LucasArts uh, shuttered their doors, some sauce leaked for the uh, Jedi Knight games, and everyone lost their mind, and they're all like, "Oh man, this is this is great! We're gonna we're gonna make a Linux version," and they did. Um, but there's still a bunch of copyrighted code in there. Um, this project seeks to exist alongside that other one by doing a completely clean room implementation of uh, the Jedi Knight engines um, so that you can play uh, well, Jedi Knight Jedi. Kind dark of forces. Dark forces. Um, either either, either way. Um, it's done for modern platforms, which is nice because now they can be integrated with SDL2, with Vulcan, with whatever they have. the project happens to give a shit about. Um so that said, um, it's it's nice. Mm. More 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 open yeah. source three implementations are good. It means that games can get played on newer computers longer. Yeah, I very much look forward to playing Outlaws at twenty five sixty by fourteen forty at one hundred and forty four hertz, because having to play it in a sixteen hundred by twelve hundred window because that's as high as the resolution will go <laughs> uh, at. 30 fps or 20 fps i don't know but that game did not run at 60. um it, yeah it needs a bit of uh upgrading i have a new <laughs> i have a new comp competitive gaming series and we're, we're gonna be playing the original quick at uhd on 28 inch monitors at 640 by 480 one 640 by 480 window that got that got censored. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that got bleeped. <laughs> We're getting censored by Twitch, man. We can't help it. Oh, we better too, hurry up and get out of here. It's too hot. All right, all right, all right. We, we, we got a couple more things we got to talk about. First of which, Zowie Wowie, not 0.5. If you got an Xbox One controller um, you want to use uh, with the wireless dongle and not in Bluetooth mode, this is the project you got to use. Um, you can even now make your Xbox One controller pretend it's an Xbox 360 controller, which should make it work with more games. But according to Ven's computer, no, because nothing's been working with the 360 controller lately. Um, <laughs> What? No, my 360 controller works swimmingly. It's this thing right here, man, that never has the correct button problems. Well, it's, it has, <laughs> that it hasn't was been like what the Jordan whole... used to complain about the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. But like, weren't weren't you saying like you you were plugging in your Xbox controller and like stuff wasn't working for the past couple of games we've been throwing chairs at? No, that was this one. Was hmm. yeah. Attention. All right. I didn't expect you were paying Eddie, so I'm not surprised. Here. I'm. I... I I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure I remember you saying DualShock worked fine. 360 controller did not. Uh, Things that I've never said. Well, we got the audio. We can we can prove it either way. Um, we both know neither of us are going to yeah. go back through it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely not. Ambiguous, <laughs> ambiguous. Uh, and the last thing we got to talk about is uh, a flying mud. Yeah, it's it's mud in the air. Yeah, that, that's what it is. <laughs> text flight man check it out congratulations operator if you're reading this human protocol what all right yeah that's pretty much what i'm thinking it is you know what the reason i want to throw this in it's completely free the source is available there's a discord and all that and i i think it's a mud space but you can connect to this thing using socat yeah you don't even have to like download the client and just socat into this thing and uh or, watch or, or like netcat or something yeah SoCat. What do you need? So if you, yeah, that's SoCat. You know, it's SoCatoa. Uh, no, it's full of <laughs> sows and cats. You, you ever sow a cat? It's brilliant. You got to hold them down. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I turned it into a hover. Uh, I turned it into a hover drone. That's how I got my cat quilt. A lot of SoCat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> speak, speak, speaking, <laughs> speaking of dead cats converted into drones. Coming up next, we're throwing chairs at Nimbus. Will we make a dead cat drone? Find out.
Welcome back to the Portuguese Autonomous Aviation Division, aka the Chair Acquisition. This week, we're taking a look at Nimbatus from Stray Fawn Studio. It's done in Unity. You can pick it up for about 20 bucks US. What is it? Command the Nimbatus and crash drones out of hundreds of or craft drones. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you're right. You had that. Right. I mean, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, not incorrect, correct, but yes. <laughs> crash drones out of hundreds of different parts survive <laughs> unknown threats in a fully destructible procedural universe, competing against other players in different arenas, or enjoy complete creative freedom in developer sandbox. Uh, the developers sent us some keys for this a long time ago, back when we were in, uh, back where, or back when it was in early access, back when we yeah. were in early access as well on Steam. You remember that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, so so how, how to run on uh, Debian? Come check it out, man. Uh, on Debian uh, testing, that's what I'm running right now. I'm hiding behind the subs. Hi, subs. Uh, <laughs> check this out. No issues. I mean, windowed, what am I running around? 1920X, Threadripper, 32 gigs of RAM, uh, NVMEs, 2060, uh, UHD display. Again, no issues. Solid 6, I had VSync on 1080p, 2160p is fine. Keyboard gerbil combo, wombo, worked as expected. Let's talk about, is it kind of fun, but Nimbatus, man? Tus or Tus? I don't know how we want to go with that. This is what Either happens or. when you create a drone constructor, like simulation, physics simulator and all that, and you tack some gaming elements on kind of like at an end, man, you know, like a rug, and really ties things together when... Uh, spinning around planets that's basically what you do you fly around in circles man you spend a lot of time flying in circles okay that's the point i'm trying to get across well Mm -hmm. it's a crashing simulator but that's the gaming element of nimbatus um it it feels kind of like an afterthought you know since you spin around in circles and destroy space bees what the hell has space bees ever done to anyone, man? Why are you going to be killing space bees? <laughs> they so? killed Fry. They explode. <laughs> I don't know. I get mixed feels about that, man. But the fun, and it's legitimate fun, to be had with this game is the time that you spend building your drone, booping around, smashing into walls in the test chamber, trying to figure out, what the fuck am I doing? That doesn't work. Okay, let's take two on that. And then smashing yourself up again. Making something that is both controllable and useful for the mission at hand, be it a drill, laser beams, that's straight up challenging. All right, I get that. I likes that. Multiplayer. Whole different kind of chainsaws on that. That could be interesting. Hell, it could be fun because they have things like drone racing and deathmatch modes. Now, the drone racing I participated in, I took the Pepsi challenge with the one other person. It made a match. Hey, it was just one. It's better than nothing. Where I was on a track with my dinky little one propulsion drone that I had for casually not smashing directly into planets i was smoked but yeah it's like okay i can see the fun of that you know what i had a good time cocking around in it i can't say i'd recommend it for 20 bucks right now but you know what if i cut this on sale i got it for like 15 14 something like that i'd definitely pick it up man uh it's good work it's a solid piece of kit i'm still a bit curious as why you uh, chose to do like fmv recording of your game for the intro which was a little pixelated when you could just done that in engine but everything else is an engine hey whatever i don't judge for fun middle of the road sort of want it you did good yeah on uh, fedora 32 64 bit with the i7 6700k gtx 1080 ti yeah i mean it plays when you click play so that's always good and your resolution option is a take tiny a window to get up and running on either of your systems because i was like where are you gonna start there you go all right i i don't know i stepped i stepped away for a second because i had to like go to the bathroom or something okay. i don't know um <laughs> yeah I, I, I don't know. Do you, do, you, do you like the resolution options? You got like tiny window or big window? I mean, they're okay. You mm. can resize it. The, the engine supports can it. Can we all just come out and say, hey, everyone, developers, round robin resolution settings can go play in traffic while dying in a drop down menu, man, because it takes a minute to get right. from 1080p to 2160. <laughs> Yeah, especially with all like the weird Bullshit software support resolutions. Right. Yeah, like who owns these? Mo- Anyways, um, control wise, yeah, I mean you got to assign buttons to thrusters and guns and stuff. So if you really don't like the controls, it's kind of your own fault. More on that in a little bit. Uh, Performance wise, holds about three hundred frames a second in big window mode. So it's good, I guess. As for the fun, I mean, I think twelve year old Jordan would have loved the crap out of this game because it's basically building a spaceship with connects, which was honestly a lot of what lonely twelve year old Jordan did a lot. I don't. I don't Okay, I'm just going to be honest that the complexity of Pedro's drone is about 99 times over what I had. 
Yeah, my, 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 mine was a little more like Sputnik-y than that. Um, yeah, mine was a ball with some shit sticking out the sides. Yeah, um, I, I, I gave up on trying to make my ship look cool, and I gave, I just like, let's just make it functional. Let's just, let's just do that. Um, anyways, um, yeah, Adult Jordan is kind of lukewarm about the game. Building the ships is fun, but the campaign doesn't really do it for me. Kind of just kind of dick around and try not to crash and complete various goals. Um, and the creative mode just gives me the same options paralysis that you get in like Minecraft or Terraria or stuff like that. Uh, there are a lot of pre-built drones on the workshop, though. So if you want to have a starting point, there are people who have published their stuff. You can take a look at it and adjust it as you see. <laughs> uh, wall. Um, After burner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like Vince said, there's online multiplayer. It has a lot of modes. We didn't really get a chance to dick around with online multiplayer. I really think that maybe like you could get into some besieged like hijinks with that, uh, but we that's just not getting factored into the review this week. Uh, all in all, I'll give it two chairs. It's uh, it's okay. It's not my jam, but yeah, it uh, uh, over here. Uh, odd Katie Neon with the Ryzen Seven Thirty Seven Hundred X and the GTX Eighty. It launches, and if you keep VSync on, it holds one hundred and forty four on my one hundred and forty four hertz monitor. So that's one thing that Unity definitely got right. Um, but if you remove the VSync, it's like oh, six hundred FERPs while you're building your drone. It's like huh, interesting. If there is background music, I couldn't tell you anything about it because I didn't notice it. The controls, well, yeah, like Jordan I already said, you're right about kind of that. Make your own. I didn't hear any beep boops or, I mean, it made noise when you were like flying a little bit. Yes, yeah, when yeah, you and, were and, shooting and the lasers and pews. like the yeah. thrusters, I mean, but I, it, yeah, I, I couldn't tell like you like background like, music. Yeah, space poker while I was slaughtering space bees like the monster <laughs> I am. <laughs> space poker? Sing, really sing us some space poker. Didn't... Can you space yodel? I'm not allowed to. Mm. No, <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> That's when we get taken down from Twitch somehow. But no, the controls, yeah, you make your own controls. Uh, so yeah, like Jordan said, it's your own fault if you're not doing it properly. But it defaults to WAS, depending on where you put the thrusters, and the lasers are left click, and the uh, little vacuum thingy is right click. Right click. So yeah, uh, fun. Well, it's retro booster by way of besieged with FDL style like level progression and a little bit of planet exploration. Very, very shallow planet exploration for that matter. But honestly, those are all very good games and really good donors of the individual mechanics. So having played a little bit of this uh, during early access, it was totally because I wanted to and not because I didn't realize it was early access. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but I also did like the semblance of the campaign that they added uh, when they did the full release because that wasn't there before, so that was nice. I think it's very well done, but if I'm being asked for my own personal opinion and whether I'd like to play more of it, my answer is a solid meh. Three chairs. <laughs> That's not the meh star score, but okay. Uh, so, uh, any any final thoughts? Do you, do you guys think that multiplayer would have like solved a lot of the issues we had? You same? know, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is the that's the multiplayer curse, man. You might have a really fun mechanic or something like that, but it's immediately killed by. I probably would have changed everything. Like, oh, this is great if I jumped in and there would have been thirty people playing. I'm like, oh, that's something to like play against. But it was me and the other person who's like, this is my thing. I play the yeah. racing stage in this multiplayer. That's why my ship has a billion. I know how to do it. I can finish this map in two. Look how good I am. I'm like, but I I don't want to invest against that. You know, I need some other people <laughs> smashing into walls, farting around. So yeah. it's well done. It's well done. I mean, 20 bucks. I mean, if you look at this, you're like, that could be fun. It'd be a good time killer. Yep. Oh. If, if and if you're into this kind of ship building game with like uh, with the physics based controls, I think like yeah, there, there's definitely a good game in here. You just gotta be the right type of person to enjoy that kind of thing. Indeed. All right. Coming up next, it's pointy. It's sharp. It's the hate mail segment. And before uh, things start beeping again, that was weird. Uh, we should probably wrap this up. And yeah. If you'd like to let us know about how you like people bleeping in your ears, roasted, I guess. Roasted, toasted, can, and bleeped to a crisp. Yes, you can go to linuxgamecast.com, hit the contact button, make sure LGC Weekly is a show that you're sending your hate mail to, and it'll be featured right here, right now, unless you're a game developer and you're trying to promote your Kickstarter, and you don't have a working build. Normally I would say expletive deleted, but that would be more like expletive de bleeped. 
Yes. Uh, the bleep. Yeah. <laughs> what you can't, what you guys can't hear. It's nope. impossible. It's not that. Yeah, no, you can't hear it. <laughs> you have no idea what I'm talking about. You have no idea what any of us are talking about. Go 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 watch the full four hour block. It's gonna be great. Jordan's gonna discover the pain button in a minute. <laughs> Liz, my, my my life is the pain Brave button. man. That's the on, shock over that's IP. The technology is coming. Don't You'd worry. You'd be surprised what you know about eighty dB sounds like. Just all at once. <laughs> all right. And, and, and anyways, Pedro, tell the people how to get in touch with us. Or did, I really have. Know? Hey, uh, Jordan, okay. pay Bye. attention. <laughs> I can uh, tell you that Ertan agreed with Jordan last week. Oh, no. Because oh, no. Uh, we were talking about uh, Proton and I was playing, you know, I was defending the argument that Proton is a good thing. And Jordan was saying Proton is not entirely a good thing. And... Um, uh, Erten says, Jordan does have a point about Proton and how more developers are seeing it as their lytic solution. We should not have one abstraction layer to which all of these developers rely, because Valve may one day stop supporting Proton. Then we may have Proton games that don't work on Linux, and we'll be back to Windows games not working either. Okay. Well, uh, counter so, argument to that. Uh, how well, long so, has so, so. Wine been around? I don't know. You told me, Pedro several i mean over a decade now like it's been at least three years <laughs> so, so the, the, the 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 issue the issue here is not so much what the issue here is not so much valve not supporting proton because you know as was mentioned a million times already proton is open source there are community contributors but the maintainability of proton as a solution uh, I am skeptical of because effectively what you're doing is you're maintaining two operating systems. You are maintaining Linux, the host operating system, and then you are uh, you are maintaining the other operating system on top of that, the Win32 API, that quite frankly requires you to reproduce bugs in the parent OS in order to make certain things work. I look, I look at, uh, I look at like a long-standing project like say Xorg, and that is so bloated. You look at other projects like Java, incredibly bloated. Um, Proton, Wine, whatever, whatever the solution may morph into, may become that. And it's, it's, it's. Pro Proton is good as a short-term solution. We have lots of games we can play now. It's great. It's wonderful. I'm not, I'm not hating on Proton. I'm just saying, let's not put all our eggs in one basket because that's how you lose all your eggs. But snakes. Why are you thinking that ever anyone is putting all the snakes in one basket? This is just one company. Now it is the one company that sh made more increased everyone's Linux gaming library overnight with more games natively on Linux than had ever existed. Period beforehand. But yeah, I mean, I I, I can't I'm, I'm, panic about it because to Pedro's point, he's like. Yeah, wine's been around 20 years, man. And I mean, there's a group of people... 17, apparently, but that yeah. <laughs> know that project inside out, much like X.org. There's that core team of volunteers. And, you know, we have people like Code Weavers and stuff like that working with Proton. And, I mean, as a permanent solution, no. But I, I definitely look at Proton as more of a complement to what we see with Native. Because I, my first thought is... Backwards compatibility on Linux fucking sucks. Period. This, this, this is true. There, there, there's a lot of cases even today where Proton is. If you're running like a Wayland desktop, Proton is your only option for playing games because that will actually be supported by the DE. Um, but I, but that's the thing. You, you can, you can, you can make the argument that yes, this should exist alongside native solutions. But then the reality of the situation is that developers don't consider that they are considering this. We don't have to do anything. We can just ship our binaries and they will run and that will be the case forever. And the minute it stops working, we're not going to care anymore. Well, that's kind of where we're already at, though. They're like, yeah, we tap that Unity yeah. button. We tap that um, yeah. UE4 we, button. We, we saw it this week. We, yeah. we, we, we talked about it at length. So this my, my, my concern is this is this is just going to become more and more and more and more commonplace until well, I think it's far more prevalent than most people realize. And I think Proton's been there at least in point of like yeah you clearly just tap that export button fam so let's see how yeah. this runs under pro oh look it actually runs better under proton and there's a lot of that and that was kind of my point last week it's we've seen more games work with proton and work reliably and work well in 
the year that Proton has been out, then we've had like native games on Linux ever. So, 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 so <laughs> then, then of course that just begs the that just begs the question: Are we okay with native Linux gaming just dying outright? Are we fine with Win32 being the dominant API like for I gaming said platforms? Last week, no, I'm not okay with that. But well, that's kind of well, how things shook out. <laughs> yep. But yeah. and 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 that 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 is the core of my argument is that we are we are ending up at an un, we're we're leading we're running towards an unmaintainable cliff we're we're putting the tracks in front of us as the train is isn't the core dri- of that driving off the cliff though is saying that Windows is unmaintainable yeah <laughs> look. look. Well, I mean, it's not wrong. <laughs> I, you, 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 you can you can get away with more garbage in a closed source operating system than you can in an open source operating system. It's like every you have, single feature update, Windows 10 breaks in spectacular ways. Yeah. <laughs> but um, in 10 and, years, and, Microsoft's going to be running a Linux kernel, right? Sure. That's what I thought, because you know what? <laughs> <laughs> On that Win32 bombshell, we gotta cue the music. Thanks to each and every one of you. Shut up. We had a little, ah, we didn't have any good fires. We had we had small little things to pet. We, we, had, we had bleepy flyers. Yeah. Bleepy fires. No, they were <laughs> silent. Flyers. Get it right. <laughs> yes. You didn't hear them. Stick <laughs> with the script. <laughs> Never happened. I- I didn't, I didn't hear that. It's impossible. That's great. No one's hearing him. Uh, if you want to get, if you want to hear me, you can find me on Twitter. I'm there. I'm doing the things uh, at Vinstone on Twitter. We have a Mastodon instance. If you're to the uh, that thing, mast.linuxemcast.com, linuxemcast.com, YouTube, all that fun stuff. Come say hi. I might click a button. No promises. Uh, if you want to be exposed to signal that is slightly less unpleasant than you mean giant silent to the point where I might message Pedro and be like, did you see Jordan like retweeted something? Exactly. <laughs> you can follow me at the Burning Fool on Twitter. Jordan just yeah. creeps. He's there. He's he's the guy behind the curtain. He's like, I'm watching. I am. Keep doing it. I'm 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 like that dude from Hamlet who got stabbed. Everyone. The wall. Polonius. I mean, you can stab this wall, but not, not this little rectangle right here. Bites. This rectangle cannot be stabbed. <laughs> but if you'd like to take a stab at me, you can do so on Twitter, please. Uh, and only on Twitter. Uh, that's at and accounted for. Uh, d- 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 follow me there. Take a stab at me. I'll take another stab Everyone at you. Everyone go How's blow that? up his live journal. Leave some comments. <laughs> It'll be brilliant. You'd have to make one first. I'll give everyone the link in a minute. Um... We get a roll that was credits. WordPress, but <laughs> oh no! I'm talking about your live journal. Do you know how long that took to make? Boop. I don't know how. Long, what, what's the fastest you can make a live journal in? I I don't know. Is that like <laughs> legitimately still a service? Sure. Let, let, let's do some live journal speed runs. Live uh, speed journaling. Jasmine. What's yeah. That? <laughs> all right, we, we, we got to thank all the people like Haplo, our resident spending too much money person, and our executive yes. producers like Arthur and Empty, the Atomic Gas, Michael G, Barbrampt, Aldius, Mac Geek, Scoot, Frosty the Claw Man, Drummer Seven, Lutris, aka he could Strider. be Chloe the Frostman. <laughs> he could. Um, and Mr. Fox Dog, we also got to thank our producers that these guys are going to say, but you're not going to hear it. It's David impossible. S, Smashley G, Michael Eagle, Jolly, Tapical, Gaius, Matthew, Max, Yabo, Stonyfish, Curse G, Che, Mr. Lurk, Red S, Macedoni, Dan W, Luke, KTW, Matt C, Mac, Mike W, Brown. Christopher C, Frezzo, Aldius, Costa, Dirty Dean, <laughs> Chris, Grayson, Jack, Abstraction. Todd, and Lucy Nicole, <laughs> Shameless Plugs. Can't read anymore. <laughs> can't read Our anymore. shell on Linux. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Pipe your things into other pipes. Absolutely. Nixon's if I, pyramid. You can if I die, can I get entombed in Nixon's right pyramid? There. Man, library.tv can eat a dick with a URL structure. Good night. Uh, <laughs> bye bye. Five dudes.